I don't consider myself a photographer. I consider myself an artist. I use photography just because it is the right medium for the ideas that I have right now. And I, I got into photography when I went to study in, 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 in Boston, when I um, embarked on, a, a, on a, a master's program there and ended up spending my three years there on the program focusing on photography. And I'll continue working with photography if it's relevant to the, to the ideas that I've got. But if it isn't, I'll be using another medium. I think what was, what was interesting for me with sustenance was send, spending such a great amount of time looking out, looking out on this view. And rather than picking up a sketchbook, it was for me very uh, intuitive to, to put the camera outside. And also at the same time as learning how to use uh, a 5.4 view camera. I would pick days with you know, bright sunny days, cloudy days, wet days, snowy days, I would, I would put the, the camera out on the balcony, thread all the cables through and draw the blinds so that the birds couldn't see me standing there. And then I, so I would set up at sunrise so to minimize any disruption to the birds and take the camera down at, 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 at sunset. And then basically I would stand there all day and wait. And if I could see feathers rustling or if I could see birds had come into the sea and I could never see what was quite in front of me because the camera was set up with a dark cloth over the back of the camera. So I just had to shoot a lot of shoots of film and hope that, um, that I had something on, on film. So there was a, a lot of kind of luck, I, I guess, involved in that. It was, it was, it was pretty ra random. So some days I would get quite a number of really great looking images. Other days, nothing, nothing that, that I, deemed was, was um, interesting enough or kind of complement what I already had. So it was just, you know, putting the camera out and, and setting up and then seeing, seeing what happens. Yes, there is a, there, there is a connection with nature right through each of these, these bodies of work that I've been doing, but I guess referencing nature in quite a, an oblique way rather than making work about nature itself. Sometimes childhood memories play, play a part in the, in, in the work that I make. I mean, that was most tangibly um, or directly there with Falling um, because uh, an input into that particular work was, was memories as a child of, of picking up sycamore, um, um, sycamore seeds and throwing them up in the air and watching them come down and that uh, pleasure in it and joy, joyfulness about watching them uh, in that moment, but also the fact that the disappointment came on so quickly because it was over, it was over so quickly. And, and I, I like the idea that as, 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 a, as an artist, I can, play with, I can play with memory and I can play with experiences and that, that, that in a work, I'm able to open up a, 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 uh, a kind of time span where something can really be experienced very acutely. It, the reality can be a very different experience because it is it is so fleeting that you can't you don't really see things, let alone get the opportunity to to be conscious of how how full an experience that can be. So that's certainly one of the pleasures that I I have about photography that you are given a a moment in time to stare and stare and stare. And say, for example, with falling, that idea of actually making a a, a, a video piece that plays with that, that kind of sensation of, of, of being attentive to and mindful about the watching of, of, of seeds descending down, down from the sky. I started collecting lots of seeds, sycamore um, seeds, in and around my, the, the places where I used to, to live as a child, so around my parents' house, um, around the school, my, my primary school, and just collected um, thousands of seeds. And then I made the photographs outside of my house, in my, my back garden, um, having my husband or a or friend's daughter throwing the sycamore seeds out of my uh, bedroom window. 
and I was downstairs um, outside on the patio with my camera facing upwards and I just shot hundreds of sheets of film um, and praying that I just timed it right, that the wind, cu the, the wind current would allow the sycamore seeds to drift past my camera instead of into my next door neighbor's garden. Sure, there are, there are certain things that are set up in terms of my camera placement, my lighting, but, it's, but, when they, but the moment, once it's gone, it's gone. Solstice was, was, was inspired by working with an astronomer um, during the making of uh, Falling looking at the, the, the heavens and, 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 and being able to identify constellations and that, that experience again, or that, that, that understanding again about how inconsequential the lifespan is of a human being compared to um, the, the, the bodies that, that, um, that, 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 that cross the skies in the universe and how when we see something, it's been traveling millions of light years by the time we actually get to see it and that, um, our, our experiences are over in a in a in a you know in a in a fraction in that that kind of comparison. So that that when I when I came away and started thinking about these things, particularly with solstice, I was thinking about how 24 hours is a unit of lived experience for us and all the things that we do within a day. But also thinking about how a, a, a 24 hours is a unit of celestial change that it's one rotation of the Earth and that there's these two very different ways of thinking about what this, this particular time span is. And that relates again to my ideas about, um, about memory and about reverie and about the experience of time and how that's, that's a perceptual experience as well as um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, 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 a physicality to the, pro, to the um, pro progression of time. I had an interest for a long time in origami and, but I hadn't had an opportunity to really start manipulating paper and working with it and seeing what one could do with it. And I decided to teach myself origami and um, origami flowers in particular. So I started working through a couple of books on origami flowers. And I knew, my intuition told me that I was onto something, that there was something of substance here that I wanted to explore in some shape or form as, as as a body of work, but I kind of hit a brick wall in not really knowing um, how to take it to the next level short of actually having made these flowers. And it was a case of, okay, well then what? And then um, the following year when I worked with um, the, the astronomer uh, and I did have this light bulb moment of, I know what I want to do. I actually want to make the um, origami flower for a cosmos. From then on, I was just making hundreds of origami flowers in different sizes. So some which I had to fold with cocktail sticks to ones that were, 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 were much larger um, with an oversized origami paper. So I work it with the printer in the lab when it was in, in the dark room, completely dark because it's obviously color photograms that we're making and absolutely cover everything over with dust sheets and be wearing shower masks and, and, and plastic over or just to try to minimize any chance of hair or dust falling on the paper and then in complete darkness scattering these origami flowers across the paper and then exposing them under the enlarger rolling up the paper and then putting it through into a processor so it was uh, each ph photogram is unique and it's just a case of however the plant um, however the flowers fell on fell on the paper so that 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 kind of idea that they're each of these flowers is constructed. It follows a, a, a particular set of instructions, but they're all slightly different because they've been handmade. And then each photogram is, is, is unique depending on how the, the flowers have been, have, have tumbled out and been scattered across the paper in complete darkness. I think even during the time when I was making sustenance, I knew that there was going to be a point where I would wanted to explore portraiture and it's fascinating portraiture as a genre has fascinated me um, but I've never really had a good idea of what I would do and it was really through flora and at the time I, did, I didn't even know that it was going to be called flora but I had an inkling of an idea of what I would do and a massive influence on me has been the work of Madame Yvonne I was amazed that this work that was made in 1935 could hold its own with, with more contemporary work 
And then when I had the opportunity to look at some of her prints in the archive at the National Media Museum, that was um, something that was really, um, really quite important and quite, um, had quite an impact on me, certainly in terms of the development of this work, to, to take it from having been something that I'd seen in print or behind glass to actually being able to see and, and physically touch these prints and really being able to scrutinise the surface of these works and see how, I guess, rough Yvonne was with her, with, with her materials. And I felt almost in a way that, that the, the roughness that was there in Yvonne's work gave me a permission to be, to be rougher with what I was doing. And um, I am, by tendency, quite a perfectionist and quite um, controlling in what I do in my work. And it's, it gave me permission to kind of loosen up and um, come to this in a, in a in a way where a roughness is, is there's a there's a there's there's an allowance to or, or permission to be to be rougher with with what I'm doing. On a, on another level, I'm also interested in how photography does what it what it does. How even though you know that it's it's a construction or it's a fiction, it's an interpretation. There's still that desire or that projection to somehow find some kind of truth that um, there's this process where you often have to like deal with what it is that you're thinking about or what it is that you you desire and faced with the, the information that, that that you're you're given so I, I'm quite fascinated by how even if, if, we're, if we're given certain things within an image for example if we know quite evidently this is something that's been constructed or that you can see the scenes within an image that our minds will still almost kind of overcompensate to, 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 because one wants to be seduced by an image, one wants to kind of believe in that fantasy or imagine what one was in that, that, that midnight scene, even though you can see the bits of string or the bits of tape and, and the, that there is a precariousness and a, 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 an ephemerality to, 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 to the set or, 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 a, or a coarseness of the materials, but when photographed, they photograph really in a, in a very kind of sensuous, quite quite beautiful way. My, my sitters have, have have marked. They see they see the context. They see these images at this scale. But um, I mean, it's, it's always a, sh a, a thrill for me to see these images when they're printed to the size they're meant to be. So if I'm if I'm kind of having the, the, the kind of shock that I had, I'm quite sure my sitters see these to scale. It'll be a, a surprise and a, a pleasant surprise, hopefully as well.